Hi, I'm Callum from Time Valley Motorhomes and today I'll be showing you the handover demonstration on the Heimer B668 which is a 2017 model. As we walk down the driver's side of the vehicle, the first locker you come to is your LPG, your, where your gas bottles are, your gas locker. And in here you've got two six kilogram bottles, so to connect the pigtail to the gas bottle you'd need an adjustable spanner or gas spanner and it's a left hand thread and then you'd nip them up turn on and off at the top of the bottle obviously turn it off when you are on the road and make sure that the bottle is securely strapped in and then you do have a changeover valve so if this bottle was to be empty you can just turn it to that bottle there or vice versa and then the large tube here is an extension for your waist so if you can't get close enough to your waist disposal point or the hole in the ground, you'd put that on and decant your waist from the vehicle. And obviously once you have turned the bottle on, press this for three seconds and it allows the gas through with the crash valve. Coming further along your habitation door, you to operate all the locks in the habitation door on the Heimer, you'd use the Heimer key so you'd open the door like so. You've got your fresh water intake, so this is your fill up point and again with the same key you can unlock this. Put the hose pipe in there until it overflows or you're happy there's enough water on board which you can see from the main control panel inside the vehicle. You've got your weight plate here, so this vehicle's gross vehicle weight is Four and a half ton. If you were to put a tow bar on and tow anything, you can tow a train weight up to six ton. And below, you do have your waste water, which will be controlled from inside the vehicle. Then, in here, you do have your waste water drop. So that turns your waste water on. You've got your payload for your garage. You've got your carpets. And you've got your cassette loo. So normally this would be up like so. And then you'd unlock it. Slide this down and then lift the cassette out. So make sure the blade's closed on the bottom of the toilet. Lift it out. Got a handle there to decart it round the site. Take the cap off, go to your waste disposal point, press the button and empty. Once you have emptied it, if you put some water in, give it a slosh, give it a rinse, and then you can fill this with chemical and put it into here, or if you're using the tablets, pint of water into the cassette, back into the vehicle, and then you drop one a tablet straight down the toilet into here. You've also got in the corner your toolkit, so this has got a jack and a brace and a torn iron. Coming round to the back, so if you use your handle for your bike rack, if you take the, the catches off first, so there's two straps, you take them off both sides of the bike rack. just releases it as this is a wind down bike rack you can then use your winding handle which clips onto this magnetic stood here and then you can wind the bike rack down and then all you need to do is you need to pull the front down as well once you've got it to a level that you can load the bikes onto the vehicle and then what you do is pull that down obviously your bike's through here, through the spokes, tie the wheels down and then you've got four bars for your um, crossbars so first, second, third and fourth bike and then you just click through your crossbars and then you, once you've got them loaded you just wind the back up for when you're travelling 
Also you'll notice you've got a reversing camera there as well and a high level brake light just above the Heimer logo. Coming to the passenger side of the vehicle. So to open these locks, it's a full turn and you push them in and then a full turn with a key and then a full turn by hand. And you do have storage underneath the bed there. And then in here you do have a storage compartment. And that's just access to your pipes there should you ever need to be in there. You put there more for when the vehicle is serviced. You've got your hookup point so to hook the vehicle up. Always hook the vehicle up first and then to the site. And if you lift the front of the hookup lead and then slide it on. And then always unhook your power source and then the van if you're doing it the other way so you're not walking around with the live lead. You've got your Aldi vent there so just make sure that is obstruction free at all times. And then under here you've got your boiler drain which needs to stand up so this drains your boiler off and allows the 10 litres of water that's stored in there at any one time out in the winter so it doesn't freeze and break the boiler as it's not covered under warranty so allow the water out and then this just allows your hot the hot, whatever's left in the hot water lines out so you'd open that one you've got your leisure batteries and you've got your fuses there so i would carry some spare blade fuses with you and they're all marked on what they are And then further down you've got your diesel, so this is your diesel filler and again this opens with a Heimer key and then you can fill the vehicle with fuel which is diesel and you do have your bonnet release here so if you release your bonnet you then slide it down so it doesn't lift up it slides down okay. so, once you've released it, get a hold of the top and slide it down. You've got the main one you're going to need, which is your screen wash in the corner, just underneath the driver. You've got your oil filler and oil dipstick there. It's your dipstick for checking the levels. Obviously, it's on an alcohol chassis, so that's just the same weight plate that's on the door, but this is the alcohol one, not the Heimer one. You've got your various liquids, so you've got your radiator coolant, your brake fluid, your power steering fluid and obviously this one is just your screen wash and then should you ever need to jump start the vehicle you'd put a your positive on here so your red jump lead on there and you'd put your negative which is your black one just up here there's a little looks like at an end of a bolt which is your earth for earth and a jump start off So once you're inside the vehicle, these are your main two control panels. So you've got your Aldi heating and hot water and you've got your main 12 volt control panel. So to turn the vehicle on and off, you would just press this button. So you'd press and hold, it'll turn on and off. You'll either get mains electric if you're hooked up like it's shown here, or you'll just get 12 volt of your two leisure batteries on board the vehicle. And then what you can do, you can use this to scroll through the menu. So you've got your Leisure battery reading, your fresh water reading, 50%, your waste water, which is empty, and then your front battery, which is your engine battery. So leisure, fresh, waste, and engine. And then on and off here. And then next to it, you do have your Aldi heating system. So you press and hold, and this will turn itself on. And if you press menu, so you've got the house with a thermometer in. This is the temperature of the vehicle. So you can have that all the way up to 30 degrees or all the way to off by pressing the plus and the minus. And then below you've got your shower, which is your water. So this is how hot you want your water. So half a bar is 50 degrees and a full bar is 70 degrees of heating your hot water. 
and then below you've got your electricity symbol so this is heating on electric so you got off if you're while camping then you would just be on gas on its own but if you are on a site and you've paid your site fees you'll obviously not want to waste your gas so you can use your electric so you just go plus so you've got one kilowatt which you'd use on a small SEL site or if you ever go abroad you've got two kilowatts which you can use on all sites throughout the UK and you've and you've got three kilowatts then underneath you've got the little gas flame where you can turn on and off the gas so if it's really cold you can put the gas and electric on together which obviously doubles the source and will reduce the time of heating the water or the vehicle and then you can go into the settings and you can set timers and so on but I'll not over complicate it I'll just keep it very simple all the other settings can be found in the handbooks or in other videos online and then to turn on and off you just press and hold above you've got your switch for your pump so if you've got no water on board turn the pump off but you can leave the pump on should there be water on board and then all your taps will work and below the television you do have your Truma Duo C control so the top off's in the middle the top one heats the regulator so if you're in the winter to stop the gas from freezing it puts a bit of heat through the regulator and then if you go at the bottom this just monitors the bottles and once that goes red it indicates that it's empty and you need to go out and change the bottle over or change the bottle should you have no spare bottle on board so to operate your max view satellite system you turn on and off here and then once it does turn on it will flash from one to five until it starts flashing on number two which is astro two which you want if you're in this country it will flash until it goes to a solid light but when it's doing that if you just press this button here this will then put the dish up and you'll hear the dish moving around on the roof of the vehicle until this goes to a solid light and then that is when it's found astro 2 which is your satellite and then your tv will work like so so this is an avtex tv so you just turn it on and point it into the red or blue light down here and then you've got source so you've got satellite digital tv dvd hdmi and then it should find a signal it'll find the best signal it can where you are and to release it from the bracket you do just slide this forward so slide it down and it'll release the TV so it can be swung either further into the lounge or into the rear bedroom now in the kitchen you've got a full oven with three gas burners and one electric hot plate so to operate your electric hot plate it's the far left hand side one so do just be careful that you haven't knocked this on in any way and then hooked up because there's no light to say it's on just make sure it's off and then you've got three gas burner rings there so once they've cooled down you can put the lid down and then below you do have your grill so allow the thermal couple to get warm before you let go like so and that's lit and then underneath you do have your oven so when traveling you may want to take your grill pan and oven shelf out as this can cause the most rattles when on the road and then you do have underneath your, your little storage bins and storage storage throughout drawers 
but in here you do have your gas isolation tap so if there's any problems with gas turn it off at the top of the bottle but these are mainly for when the vehicle is serviced the technician will test that the gas is working to the correct standard and then you've got your kitchen lights there so under counter and all your overhead lights underneath your fridge opposite you do have storage as well and then if we just go up to the fridge so this is a Dometic fridge so to operate you turn on here and then A stands for automatic energy selection so what that means is it will find the best source suited what the vehicle has so at the moment it's got mains electric as we're hooked up if I was to take the mains electric out we'd switch over to gas and if I was then to start the engine it would go to battery the battery comes from the engine alternator not the leisure battery and is solely just to keep the temperature the same when you have departed so it won't actually cool the fridge on its own it needs to be chilled beforehand either on gas or electric and then you can put on the battery and it'll keep the shop in nice and fresh and then part of winterizing if you just leave the door ajar and it stops any once you've cleaned it out stops any mold and funny smells from occurring in the fridge so underneath the storage compartment in the floor in the kitchen area is where you'll find your location of your fresh water tank so you can take this out to get into the water tank should you ever want to clean it out and to drain the fresh water use this little tap here so it tells you here that a quarter of a turn is 20 litres left in the fresh water which is basically your travelling capacity and then next to it if you if you turn it two times to the left it will open the water and drain out the full tank so you do it by using this here for winterizing or if you've taken on any contaminated water the switch on the passenger side rear bed is for your heated bathroom floor this it turns the fans on to blow the heat underneath the double floor in the bathroom to make it warm. So if you wanted the floor to be warm, you just turn the switch on. And then the back telly is the same as the front in Avtex and works off the satellite system. And then you do have DVD, AV and digital TV and HDMI on the, the back one as well. But should you ever need to retune the TV you would just go to TV setup which is here and then down to search and where it's got transponder you just press OK and it'll find it'll do an auto tune on the satellite and find as many channels as it can and that's the same for the front you can do this on the front as well to open your overhead lockers if you just push the catch down behind it to release the door and you've got storage in the top ones to open your windows you would just release the levers on the windows so there's four and one in the corner and then push it all the way out to bring it in make sure it's securely fastened before you do start traveling anywhere and then you do have a fly screen and a blackout blind and they clip they clip together so to unclip them if you just press the top of the clip and they will separate you've got your lights for your bathroom here and these lights have got two settings so off blue which is your night light or you can press it again and the main light will come on and then you can gain access underneath the beds by pulling the little strap up and in there you do have your storage and you've got some leveling ramps there as well and the Malenko bag and you've got your nets which can come across the window for privacy when you're sighted to work the skylight in the bedroom at the rear just turn this push it out you then do have a blackout blind and a fly screen and then you just shut it and make sure that that is vertical 
and securely fastened before you do start traveling. In your bathroom, you've got your large wardrobe and storage unit. Same skylight as in the bedroom. The sink showing you the hot water is coming through. So, and operate your toilet. So make sure the pump's on flush. The fan will kick in, so if you just press that till it goes solid, that's not the fire. Flush the toilet, then you'd open the blade at the bottom, so you'd push it to the right. That lubricates the blade, then you'd use the toilet, then you'd flush again, and then you can close the blade. And that's how you would use the Fetford cassette loo. And then underneath, you do have storage for toilet reeds, but you've also got your toilet roll holder here where you can feed the toilet roll through the door. Lights for in the shower and you do have your shower screen so make sure the tide back when you travel stops them banging around when you're on the road and then you've got your shower head and hose so take the head off the hose when you're winterizing it and not using it it stops any water that's built up down here if you lie this in the shower tray it'll stop any water that's built up it'll drain off. Leave all the taps open as well. The mixer taps in the middle position when you are winterizing the vehicle, not using it over the Christmas time. Got a hanging reel and then above you do have a another skylight so you can just press these in so you push the black bits in there and then you can open the window either one side or both together depending on which way the wind's blowing. And this is just showing that your hot water is working there, as you can see the steam coming off the water. And in your kitchen, this cupboard here is designed for a coffee maker, so there is a plug in there. So to open it up, if you go underneath, release the catch, you can then slide it down and open the door for your coffees in the morning. Now in the front of the vehicle, to get the drop down bed down, what you need to do is fold the seats down, so if you just pin these back it will then slide the seat forward. Do be careful with this one that you don't put it too close to the horn as the weight of the bed can then set the horn off. Release the seat belt and then you can, you've got an electric switch here so you can electrically bring the bed down by just pressing and holding. This will come down to here. And then you've got the same skylight as the bedroom and bathroom. And then you've got two lights which you can turn on and off on both sides. And then there you have a large double bed and the privacy curtains to come across. And operate the table, so there's a little lever just underneath, if you just pull this down, you can then gain access and it'll move, the table will move back and forth, either into the cab or in the middle of the vehicle or away from you. And then when you do travel, if you just lock it back into place by pushing this back up, it'll stop it moving around when you're on the road. The location of your trips for the vehicle, it's just in here, this is where the, the trips are, so should you have tripped anything out on electric, you've got your trip tester and your all your RCDs and MCBs in there. And then in your wardrobe at the back you do have your Aldi expansion tank, so you've got a min and a max on here, so when the system is on and up to full operational temperature it will show more it will show more than what it is when it's off. So when it's off, you might think, oh, I might want to top that up. Put it on first and then see the level that it's on when it's operating, and then you can top up from there. But allow it to cool before you do open it up and top it, top it up as it is an expansion tank and this is hot liquid. So always read it when it's on, and then you can turn it off and top it up as it's an expansion tank. So when it is on, up, on and up to operational temperature, it will show a higher level. So as long as it's between min and max, you're totally fine.
And now in the cab to turn your seats round you do have this bar here so this releases it and then you can turn the seat round should the seat get stuck anywhere you will just readjust the driving position and then on this seat you do have two adjustments so you can bring the front up and you can bring the back up should you be a shorter person or you can drop it down so now in the cab to the right of the driver you do have a storage compartment your handbrake your mirror adjustment which does the top and the bottom on both sides so the blind spot and the big mirror you put your heated mirror switch your step doesn't automatically come in when the engine is put on but it will make a buzzing sound so you just press this and it will bring the step in you've got your headlight adjustment and your rear and front fogs I'll get onto this in a minute, this is your alarm indicator but I'll get, in, get onto that in a moment. You've got your wipers with the trip computer on the side so it will tell you your range left in your tank. Your average consumption, your instant consumption, your average speed, your travelling times A and there's trip A and B. You've got your headlights and indicators. Then you've got cruise off in the middle, cruise at the top and speed limit at the bottom. Six speed manual gearbox with uplift into reverse which brings on your rear view camera like so which you can see through the bike rack or you can press cam and it'll show you your other your rear view camera so you can have this on when driving along by pressing cam you've got traction control which turns it off hill descent control which doesn't really you don't really need to use this because it doesn't work as it's for an automatic and this is a manual hazards your lock button there which you have to manually lock the doors on the high and then you do have a USB for charging and a 12 volt for charging and then you've got your climate control so you've got your fan speed here your distribution so where you want the air to go to now I've done auto or full auto and then you have got the temperature on here so you can put the temperature up and down and then you've got off if you didn't want it on your air conditioning recirculates the air within the vehicle or you've got your max demister for your front screen which will make the fans go up and it'll clear the front screen should it have been fogged up this switch here for the nav is basically if you want to use the head unit when you're parked up it will switch the power from the engine battery to the leisure battery so the leisure battery will then power this so you can have this on as long as you want and there'll be no risk of flattening the engine battery only the leisure battery if you are while camping or if you're hooked up then you've got no worries at all so to turn on and off you'd press here you've got your volume if you go to home you've got your tuner which is either AM, FM or DAB but everyone uses DAB so you've got your list of stations there so then you can press these to save so you can save scroll through them so you've got three pages there where you can save six channels on each if not you can go back to home so you press home tune it you go to navigation and then to set your navigation you go to, the, to here new route and you put your address in where you want it to go Communications is your Bluetooth, so to find your phone, you'd go get rid of these ones. It's just your settings for your Bluetooth, but you can go back to the device management. All your different settings on the bottom. you can search for nearby Bluetooth devices 
it's best that you search on your phone for it'll probably come up as that there so that little code there which is the head unit number it'll probably come up as that on your phone press pair and then it'll ask you if you want to pair on here then it will then ask you if you want to sync your contacts just press yes and then it will download your phone book into the vehicle so whoever rings will come through with the head unit you can also use it for bluetooth audio so there is a cd on here or you can use it as bluetooth audio or you can connect your phone via the media through the usb which is in the top glove box there so if you go home you can go along the media which is it'll either be bluetooth music should you have a phone connected to it ipod which is through the usb and various other and then you've got your setup where you can sort your your bass and your various other settings out which is all explained in the handbook so to lock the door in the cab you'd press this catch in to lock and pull out to unlock and then to black the cab out on an evening you've got blinds on both the sides which would just clip up onto there so these are just magnetic on the side and then you slide them into the middle and they are magnetic as well so do to the sides like this and the front windscreen and then operate your alarm so what you need to do to, to when arm in the vehicle, if you've locked everything and then you press the, the lock button on the key, as much as this key doesn't do anything as it's an A-class, every key, all the doors are operated by this key. If you just press lock, it will set the alarm. But should you want to arm the vehicle with yourselves in, what you need to do is turn these sensors off, otherwise it'll pick you up moving around the vehicle and set the alarm off. So to do that, you put your key in the ignition, turn the ignition on, Turn the ignition off. Within six seconds, press and hold the black button on the dash. It flashes red light until it can't flash anymore. And it's turned the sensors off. As soon as the engine is then started, it will go back to the sensors being armed. So do just take that in mind. So if you've parked up for a week and you're not moving, then it's off for the week. But then if you're moving daily, you'd have to do that every time you stopped. It will then still arm the perimeter of the vehicle. So it'll arm the bonnet, the doors, the garage, and so on but just not inside.